Hello everyone, Genki here, and today we're going to try and beat Pokemon Scarlet with only Paldini Wooper. Paldini Wooper is a regional variant of Dotonian Wooper. It's poison and ground, versus its counterpart which is water and ground. Paldini Wooper shares the same stat distribution as Dotonian Wooper, so it's very weak. It has very mid HP attack and defense, but then we have Horrible special attack, special defense, and speed. We are slow and frail. Our move pool by level up contains plenty of poison moves with a couple of ground moves, with our final move being Earthquake. By TM, we get the rest of the essential ground moves like Dig and Bulldoze. We also get access to Water and Rock moves. Surprisingly, Wooper can learn Trailblaze. Maybe that will help with speed control. However, the one thing that concerns me is Wooper's lack of self-afflicting status moves. We learn moves like Acid Spray and Entry Hazards like Self Rocks, but our only stat boosting move is Amnesia, which raises our special defense. This concerns me, but we won't know anything until we try it out. Let's go over the rules. I can only use Paldea and Wooper in battle. No items in battle, only held items and items outside of combat are allowed. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's begin. Luckily for us, Paldea Wooper can be found in the tutorial area, but I wanted a specific ability on Wooper. So to make it easier on me, I gave myself Klaxon. This way, we can check Wooper's ability without needing to catch it. But we end up finding a Wooper with the right ability very quickly. I named the Wooper Whoop because I could not think of anything better. Her terror type is ground, and she is docile in nature, so neutral stat gains. Her ability is water absorb, which causes water moves to heal us, instead of inflicting damage. That gets rid of one Wooper's four weaknesses. Now, before we can enter Mezagoza, we have to battle Nimona. Nimona starts with Fricoco. Fricoco is faster, but after a single mud shot it became slower. So we only got hit twice before taking it out in 3 mud shots. Last is Palmy, who for some reason only used Thundershock, which we are immune to, so Palmy goes down to 2 mud shots. We can now go pick up the TM for Rock Tomb and challenge the first gym. However, Rock Tomb can only help us so far. At level 14, Nimble is a 2 KO thanks to a crit. But then Tarantula is a 3 KO, and it can do quite a bit of damage with Assurance. We go down to Teddy Ursa. We do some grinding before challenging KD again at level 17. Nimble is still a 2 KO, but now Tarantula is a 2 KO. Teddy Ursa took us to a third of our help with Fury Swipe, but it is looking like 3 KO. On the second turn, our Quick Claw, which I bought in town but didn't need to, finally activates. Teddy Ursa then misses his Fury Cutter, and the speed drops from our Rock Tombs allows us to outspeed and finish off Teddy Ursa. Next up is our first Titan, Claw. 3 Mud Shots in Phase 1. It would have probably been 2 if I had terrestrialized earlier, but I wanted to stay poisoned to resist Rock Smash. Against Phase 2, we terrestrialized first turn, but Mud Shot is not doing that much. Along with Shelter's Water Gun, it takes 5 attacks to take out Claw. Oh, and by the way, since Scarlet and Bot do not have the option to turn off battle animations, trash slicing causes a lot of flashing lights. I just want to put that out there. I wasn't sure how to put like an epilepsy warning or something on this. Like, is it better to mention in the voiceover? Should I put words on screen about the flashing lights? If anyone has any ideas what's better, please let me know. Now, our next destination would naturally be the Grass Gym. But first, I wanted to do a grind session. So as usual, I bought an Electric Boost Sandwich in Mezzagosa. I grinded on Shinx, Pommies, Rookies, and Napolis. For those not familiar, Shinx helped raise a Pokemon's attack stat. Pommies and Rookies help with speed, and Napolis help with defense. We also got up to level 25 in order to learn Poison Jab. And well, because of that, Brassies was an easy sweep. Petal and Smaller both one shots, while Sudowoodo was a 2 KO. Time to go back west to face our second titan, Bombardier. 
Phase 1 goes down to 3 rock troops, but then Phase 2 Bombardier only goes down 2 turns, thanks to the combined power of rock tomb and not lose rock throw. Following Bombardier, I decided to try the Team Star Dark Base, and um, yeah. Let's go take on the Electric Gym. But first is a battle to Mona. However, just like Brassius, Rockruff and Palmy are one shots, and Crocolore is a 2 KO. Time to face Iona. And this was not an instant victory. We can make it through Watchful and Belly Bolt just fine, and even fully set up Amnesia. But then out comes Luxio, who is faster and takes us out with Bite. At level 30, we start by putting Watchful to sleep with Yawn and Protect. We then take it out with two poison jabs. Next is Belbo, who literally cannot touch us. It only has Spark and Water Gun. This allows us to set up three amnesias before taking it out in three hits. Time for Luxio. Luxio is still faster, but Bite does not cause us to flinch, so we are able to put it to sleep. Two poison jabs take out Luxio and last is his Magius, who outspeeds and confuses Wu. But we managed to get a poison jab off. It is looking like a 3 KO. So he put Miss Magius to sleep, and I was correct. Two more poison jabs to take out Miss Magius. I decided to try out Earthworm next, but no luck. Earthworm is immune to ground and poison, and resists rock. We have nothing to hit it with. Let's see if we can get any luck on Giacomo. His Ponyard is an easy one shot since we have ground moves. The problem is the Starmobile. The Starmobile has Intimidate, but we had gone to clear amulet to bypass stat drops. This also ignores Metal Sound, allowing us to get off a Tail Whip, lowering the Starmobile's defense. Yeah, I decided to relearn Tail Whip for this battle. Well, with only 3 HP remaining, we take out the Starmobile in 3 days. Time for the Water Gym, and this was also not a first try victory. Kofu starts with Veluza, who has Mold Breaker. Mold Breaker bypasses any ability that limits a Pokemon's move selection. In this case, Water Absorb. So Veluza can hit Whoop for super effective damage. This was an easy fix though, because in this game, there's an item called the Ability Shield. The Ability Shield protects the Pokemon from having their ability removed or bypassed. This allows us to take out Veluza in 3 Trailblazes while still in full health. By the time we face Kofu though, we're at level 40, which means we now know Earthquake. Moktrua outspeeds and hits us with Mud Slap despite our speed boost, but it is a one shot. Last is Coronable, who thankfully misses its slam, giving us the opportunity to take it out in 3 Earthquakes. Next is Team Star Firebase, and we had tried this base a few times already, but we were struggling. While Ground is super effective against Fire, it does not resist fire. Rock resists fire. However, this time we had Earthquake. Torpo is an easy one shot, and Myla Starmbill is a 2 KO. Next up is Earthworm, and this time we have water moves to use against it. Water is neutral to steel, so they are our best moves against Earthworm. Earthworm can still do over half our health with Iron Tail though. I decided putting Earthworm to sleep first was the best idea. And that allowed us to take out Phase 1 Earthworm with 5 Chilling Waters. The rain probably helped us a little bit, I think. For Phase 2, we continued our onslaught of Chilling Water and combined with Toad School's Grass Knot, take out Earthworm in 5 turns. Next is the Team Star Poison base. Whoop resists Poison, so Atticus's Skun Tank will prefer using Sucker Punch, which only works if we attack it. So we put Skun Tank to sleep while still in full health. It sadly does not last long, as we set up two trailblazes to boost our speed. However, Atticus's star build is really fast, so he puts Skunkling back to sleep and set up one more trailblaze before taking it out with Earthquake. Reverie Room and Muck are both one shots, and last is a star build, which still outspeeds and gets a crit with spin out, taking move to below half health, while Earthquake leaves the star build still in green health. Spin out drops the star build speed by half. So Whoop outspeeds the next turn, and it takes the Starmobile to yellow health, as the Starmobile used Spin Up again. This time, leaving Whoop on only 12 HP, 
It goes down the next turn. Let's go face our next Titan, Great Tusk, who, despite fighting being resisted, still does over half a whoop's health for Brick Break. However, we managed to put it to sleep. We then spammed Chilling Water, which lowered Great Tusk attack stat every hit. We got it at 4 Chilling Waters before Great Tusk woke up. I decided to put it back to sleep before finishing phase 1 with 2 liquidations. Time for phase 2, and um. This took a few tries. On this attempt, Great Tusk started with Rapid Spin, which did half a whoop's health as we put it to sleep. By then, Scovillain had taken Great Tusk a half health with Razor Leaf. We were not doing much damage, so we just spammed Chilling Water as we finished off Great Tusk in four more turns. Next up is the normal gym, and we're having speed issues. Kamala is faster, and can put us to sleep with Yawn. Yeah, we can hold a Chestnut Berry to wake back up, but Kamala can just put us back to sleep. And then following Kamala is the Dunsparce, who likes to use Glare, and can do a lot of damage with Hyper Drill. Time for more grinding. And thankfully, Whoop is at a level where she can grind on Luxios instead of Shinx. We did try to see if the Ghost Gym would be any easier, but we can't even get past the Gym Trainer with Misdreamers and Haunter. Two Pokemon who both have Levitate, so back to more riding. And this time, we find ourselves a Shiny Ponyard on our level 1 Electric Boost Sandwich. And also a Shiny Pommy. I wish you were this easy when I was actually hunting you. Well, we get this run against Larry at level 60. Against Kamala, our Quick Claw activates, allowing us to one-shot Kamala with Earthquake while still in full health. The Dunsparce, who you think we now outspeed, is a one-shot, but next is Raptor, who lowers our attack with Intimidate. However, our Quick Claw activates, and because Raptor terrestrialized to a normal type, it can be hit by Earthquake, which takes Raptor to below half health. We survived two rounds of Facade, with 27 HP remaining before finishing off Seraptor. Immediately following the gym is the Battle of Nimona. Lycanroc of course outspeeds. It hits us with Bite, but it is a one-shot. Gooey is a one-shot. Pommel hits us with Quick Attack, but it is a one-shot. And last is Skeleturge, who outspeeds and takes Woop to 10 HP with Torch Song, but it is a one-shot. Let's go retry the Ghost Gym. This time, I used Rock Slide to take the Mischief as a Haunter to Yellow Health. But then the Haunter took itself out with Curse, leaving only the Mischievous who went down the next turn. Time to battle Ryan. Oh, and I decided from now on, I'm going to use Magikarp as my other partner to prevent stuff like Taurus's Double Intimidate. Well, as expected, Mimikyu's Shadow Sneak takes out Magikarp. But then Banette's Shadow Sneak took a third of Whoop's health. Earthquake one-shots Banette, and it gets rid of Mimikyu's Disguise. Houndstone is next, and thanks to being terrestrialized, we get an Omni Boost. Also, our Quick Law activated. Mimikyu goes down to Earthquake, but Houndstone survived around health. This allowed to use Phantom Force, so it vanished as Toxic came out. Well, Whoop goes first. So while we missed Houndstone, Toxtricity is a one-shot. Houndstone goes down the next turn. Now, I know we just had one, but another Nora battle is next. We start the battle out by putting Lycanroc to sleep with Yawn and Protect. Our accuracy is down from Sin Attack though. We use this time against Lycanroc to set up Amnesia to boost our special defense, before one-shotting Lycanroc with Earthquake. We missed our Earthquake against Sligu, who hit us with Dragon Pulse, but we healed a little with Leftovers. Sligu is a one-shot. Against Palmont, we put it to sleep to set up another Amnesia before taking it out. It lasts is Skeldurge, who doesn't do that much damage with Torch Song, so it easily goes down. Time for the Ice Gym. Now, Frostmoth is easy to get past, thanks to Rock Slide. The others, however, are a different story. So let's go try the Psychic Gym. We start by putting Furograph to sleep, but it only lasted one turn as we set up two Amnesias. 
Rerefting goes down to one earthquake. Gardevoir and Spother and Flur just all on speed and do big damage, but are all one shots. We beat the gym with only 13 HP remaining. All that is left is the ice gym. And before reattempting, I went and got Whoop hyper trained to raise her attack, special defense, and speed, but it was not looking good. I did not want to do this, but I felt like I had to. I changed Whoop's terror type to normal. This way, we don't take super effective damage from ice. This is how the battle eventually went. We start by, as usual, putting Frostmoth to sleep, but not before Frostmoth set up Tailwind. Frostmoth was then only asleep for one turn. Thankfully, it missed its Blizzard, as we set up two Trailblazes. Blizzard then does over 100 HP in damage, so that's nice. Rock Slide one shots Frostmoth. Ferenix survives Rock Slide at a quarter health, and then its Icicle Crash takes us to only 9 HP. Beardick then decides to go for Aqua Jet, which activates Water Absorb, healing Whoop to 65 HP. Beardick goes down to one more Rock Slide. Against the Titan, we can hit with Ice Spinner, but we survive with Yellow Health. It puts the Titan to sleep. Two Rock Slides take out the Titan. Last is Altaria, who misses his Hurricane as we put it to sleep. It also goes down to two Rock Slides, and we finally beat the Ice Gym. Time for our last Titan, Dondozo. Dondozo has two water moves, so we just go in guns blazing and take out Phase 1 Dondozo with 4 earthquakes. Oh, and by the way, our attack stat is maxed out. Well, as expected, Phase 2 Dondozo is more bulky. And also we got crit on Greedon, because of course we did. However, Greedon did get off two tails before we took it out with Earthquake. Two more earthquakes take out Dondozo and next is Tatsugiri. Icy Wind immediately takes Boop to almost half health. However, we managed to put it to sleep. Tatsugiri was only asleep for one turn, but it used Mighty Water, healing Boop to almost full health. The Mighty Water did take out Gradient though. Two more earthquakes take out Tatsugiri. Time to finish the Team Star bases, starting with the Fairy base. Azumarill and Wigglytuff are both one shots of Poison Jab. Dash One then goes for its priority Baby Doll Eyes twice, which cuts our attack in half, but Dash One is a 2 KO. Last is Starbill, who was being annoying with Confuse Ray, but after 3 Tail Whips, it is a 2 KO. Last is the Fighting Base, and this one took some strategizing. First, against Tasha Crow, we put it to sleep. And because Whoop resists poison and fighting moves, Toxic Croak will only use Sucker Punch, which fails since we only use status moves. However, our bad sleep luck continues, as Toxic Croak woke up after one turn, but we did set up two Trailblazes. I decided to put Toxic Croak back to sleep, and by doing this, we take out Toxic Croak in three more Trailblazes. This raises our speed to plus five. Next is Annihilate, and we go for Tail Whip as Annihilate takes us to almost half health with Ice Punch. It is a one-shot with Earthquake. Lucario is a one-shot, but Kasimi survives Earthquake. It takes me back to Yellow Health, after Leftovers had brought us back to Green Health. It goes down the next turn, and lasts us Airy Star Wheel. We go for Tailwind twice, as the Star Wheel sets up Shift Gear, and misses its high horsepower. We go for Earthquake, which takes the Star Wheel to below half health. But then the Starbill sets up its second shift gear. This means the Starbill will outspeed the next turn, so we terrestrialize and survive its high horsepower. The Starbill goes down to one more earthquake. Time for the Elite Four. We start to battle by putting Wish Cash to sleep. It is a one shot with Trailblaze. We then terrestrialize during Dawn Fan, who survives Trailblaze in Green Health. Dawn Fan's earthquake, though, takes us to below half health. It goes down to liquidation. Camera and Dark Trio are both one shots, and last is Cloud Sire. Cloud Sire also has Water Absorb, so we have to use Trailblaze, which is looking like a 3 at KO. So we put Cloud Sire to sleep. Two more Trailblazes to finish off Cloud Sire. Next up is her. 
Battling Poppy was such a pain in the butt. She starts with Kaparaja, who has high horsepower. So we naturally terrestrialize as we put it to sleep. They take it out with Earthquake. But guess what? Next is Corviknight, who is immune to Earthquake. Also, it has super effective body press. And if we don't terrestrialize against Kaparaja, Poppy sends up Bronzong, who has Levitate. While our rock moves are neutrally effective to Corviknight, Bronzong and the other still have to resist them. And it looks like our water moves are not helping that much. At level 100, we get this run against Poppy. We don't terrestrialize and one shot have Barraja, so Bronzong is next. We then terrestrialize and put Bronzong to sleep. Three body slams take up Bronzong. Corviknight outspeeds and hits us with body press, but we also put it to sleep. It also goes down to three body slams. Magnozoid survives the earthquake thanks to Sturdy, but it takes us to red health with Discharge. It goes down and lasts Tinkaton. We go for Protect, protecting Tinkaton's Gigaton Hammer, which cannot be used consecutively. That way, we're hit with a weaker player off the next turn before one-shotting Tinkaton. Next is Larry. Against Tropius, we go for Yawn as Tropius set up the sun. It then goes for Solar Breed as we use Trailblaze. Once asleep, we set up another Trailblaze before taking out Tropius with Body Slam. Next is Seraptor, and we're holding the clear amulet so no attack draw from Intimidate. It is a one-shot with Body Slam. Altaria is a one-shot with Stone Edge. Oricorio is a one-shot with Body Slam, and last is Flamigo, who is a one-shot with Stone Edge. Last of the Elite Four is Hassle. Norvern outspeeds and misses its Super Fang, as we use Trailblaze. It then lands its next Super Fang, taking us immediately to half health, as we use our second Trailblaze. We now outspeed Norvern and take it out with Fire Slam. Dragali is a one shot with Earthquake. Flapple is a one shot with Fire Slam. Axure survives Fire Slam though, but we paralyze it, so we don't get hit as we take it out. Last is back Scalibur who also gets paralyzed by Body Slam, allowing us to take it out the next turn. Finally, it's time for Gita. Now, what can I say about this bat? Well, Gita starts with the Spothra, who can hit us with super effective Psyche moves if we stay poison type. If we terrestrialize, Body Slam leaves the Spothra on a sliver. The problem though, is Gita's next Pokemon, Avalug who does a lot of damage with body press. I did find a little bit of relief with the Quick Claw. Also, Earthquake, while we are not terrestrialized, is a one shot on Spothra. Then during Avalug, we terrestrialize and go for Tail Whip. This allows Body Slam to be a 2 KO. King Gambit is an easy one shot, but then Gita sends out Gogo, who outspeeds us. Gita has also sent out Falooza before, who of course has Mole Breaker, so its water moves do damage. In particular, it's Aqua Jet, which goes first even with a Quick Claw activation. We battled Gita for 2 hours, and we had not even seen Glamora once, so I decided to call it quits. I cannot beat Pokemon Scarlet with only Pandang Wooper. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Even if I did get past Gita, I would have to deal with that.